everyone, Joseph here from Action Hacks. Welcome to What's on the Tube, where um, each and every week we do multiple um, television commentary, episode reviews, season reviews, whatever you want to um, call us. I still, I've done this show now for over 115 episodes, and I don't even know what I'm calling myself or this show. But anyway, um, if you clicked on this um, review, you're obviously interested in Perry Mason. Specifically, season one of Perry Mason. Is it worth the binge? Is it worth your time? Is this eight episode delight really worth it, Ed? To sum it up in one word, yes. Yes, it is. We'll get to more on that detail in a bit, but just to let you know, this will be a spoiler free slash spoilers review. We're going to start with the spoiler free part, free part where I'll talk about very generic t talk about the show. No spoilers there, because literally, considering this is a crime drama, mystery of sorts. It just spoils everything, um, so you so you're fine from here until I let you know. Then the second half will be spoilers, which basically is going to be a continuation of because if you're unaware and if you are going to watch Perry Mason, you can use me as a reliable source to for commentary on each and every Perry Mason episode because I have reviewed every single one of them. All eight of them has been reviewed all live on the channel. So if you want to go check them out now, once you're currently in your binge watching. Um, I'm there. I'm, I'm there for you. I've done it all, all, uh, all eight. It's been it was a very delight of an eight weeks, and um, it's over now. And then, of course, my spoilers side will be kind of picking up where those um, reviews left off. Um, so yeah, there you go. There's kind of your little expectations for um, what's in store today. So anyway, with that being said, let's get down to it. So spoiler free, one sentence only: Is Perry Mason the the first season worth your time? Worth the binge on HBO Max? Yes, very much so, yes. Um, when I first was approaching Perry Mason, it was very much on the side of, like, um, I was just in the mood to continue the crime solving, the, the mystery elements that I've been doing. Um, and it com kind of combined two elements. Um, it says, um, before I reviewed Perry Mason, the episodes, I reviewed Nancy Drew and The Rookie, which I know are those are completely two totally separate shows on different networks. They're all radically different, but I was kind of in the mood for something similar in the vein. Not an exact carbon copy, but just something in the similar vein. Like, I wanted a Sunday show again, which was the rookie for 20, for 20 weeks that I've done um, that review series. And there was also Na Nancy Drew, which provided me the mystery-solving element that I missed so much from when I used to watch Scooby-Doo back in the day. But it, it's still in, in connection. Then I found out about Perry Mason. Wasn't that long coming out until, um, until after I had wrapped up the rookie season two. So I'd say, you know what, let's, let's do it. Um, but honestly, similar to Nancy Drew, I had no real prior history on Perry Mason. I, haven't, I think I've heard of him like a couple times in high school, but I never really like looked into him. I never looked into it. And it, I don't want to say I attach myself to the show for bias reasons because not only was it a team downy production i.e robert downey jr and his wife um it wasn't just because it was an hbo show and for many years i've always heard great things about hbo shows like game of thrones westworld um watchmen and i'm like i never watched those shows live or have even watched them at all and i'm like damn i am really far behind and you know hbo Mostly, 90% of the time, they're delivering great content. They're, they're delivering the shows that are not normal television. They're they're breaking the boundaries. And I was like, I want to jump on that bandwagon. And I picked Perry Mason because it was the, the closest one when I was looking for for something. And then it came. And, and then I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this. And so, having no knowledge on the series, and thankfully it is... It's not an origin story series. It's definitely kind of like a, it's a prequel to the books. It's a pre. It's a. It, it's 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 its own origin story in a sense. Like we don't. It's not like your typical origin story where we see Perry's life or we see his upbringing. We don't see much of that. This is mostly figuring him out as a character in the beginning of the story and how does he turn into the character we know that many people um, know him from from his books uh, and from other works of media that I'm presuming exist out there. Um, so for me, again, similar to Nancy Drew, I have, I, I had no experience and prior knowledge. This was going to be my entry point into the series, into this giant franchise of the character. And I was ready to let the writers, to, to let the team behind the show 
give me their take on Perry Mason, which will be, for me, the longest time. I don't think I'll ever go back and forward my definitive take on, on Perry Mason. Um, so, initially going through the, the show in the first... I want to say the first three episodes were kind of... They're, they're kind of slow, in my opinion. Like, I didn't really get hooked into... Like, here's the thing. If, if it wasn't for the episode review series, I st- it, for the for the reviews I've done, I still would have watched Perry Mason. Um, regardless, I still would have kept going after episode one. I still would have watched the whole season through and through. None of that would have changed. None of my opinions would have changed on that matter. But it wasn't until episode four, it was like, okay, this show is different. This show is trying to showcase something. And after episode four, I was all in. I was very much head over heels ready to go, ready to see what the next week's going to bring, and then continuing the the story. And it wasn't just the mystery. It was also the story of, and I've said this before on every single review series I've done so far, the characters. The characters shine through, all unique, all showcasing their elements, showcasing where they're coming from, where they're going, and that's the thing I loved about Perry Mason, especially Perry himself, played by the amazingly talented Matthew Rees, um, who I did not know was, oh, was a quote. Uh, here's the thing I'm always like, wh- how do people in other ethnicities just master an American accent so well? I'm, I'm just, how? Like, it's just so, I don't know, it's just like so weird for me. Like, I've never been able to master an accent before, but still, I'm like, Jesus Christ, this guy, like, because I, I watched the, um, the Q&A um, with him and Robert Downey Jr. Uh, a little bit before the, the, the finale. And I was like, what? He's not... I thought he was British. And I'm like, I thought maybe he was American. I'm like, oh my God, I was so wrong. I'm not trying to be like culturally insensitive, culturally insensitive or maybe just like, I'm assuming that, oh, because he looks Caucasian that he must be American. I'm not saying that at all. Just like, the, the his voice in the show was just so good. And I was like, okay, this guy has to be an American. Like, that's just how good it is. And I was completely wrong. So, uh, I'm, I'm allowed to be wrong before. I've been wrong many times. But we only talk about the stuff I was right. Anyway. Um, so... And even, even like, I'm, oh, well, now that I'm talking about, like, oh, it was episode four that really hooked me up. It's not to say, like, the first three episodes didn't really, like... The first three episodes were charming. They were just very... They felt very generic, but still in that, like... It was getting to the point where it's, like, I would start to eventually really love the show. But, and, but the elements were still there. I just never really caught on to it till a little bit later. But the first three episodes are still, like, very good pieces of television. I still... I could I could still be fine rewatching them if I was to ever rewatch Perry Mason at some point in the near future, um, but yeah, but but um, the story itself is you can assume it's basic, but there's just more. It's more complexity. It, there's more elements to it um, than your typical like, like it's a mystery. Like you know, it's it's all about a murder, as many crime dramas are about. They're all about a murder. What happened to the murder? Who did the murder? Is it this person? Is it that person? We have suspicions about this person, but it could be this other person. That that sort of thing. Um, it's from the beginning that, like, I think it was, like, we as an audience, like, we knew from the get-go who did what, but we didn't know how we got there. And that's the thing I always loved about mysteries, is that like, when we start to get the scenes of seeing the actual crime or the actual event taken motion via flashbacks or via retellings it was that's always the moments like yes let's go this is it we're figuring it out and I'm, I'm i'm always super super happy when we get to that especially i geeked out during nancy drew when we finally found out the uh the the, the solution to that mystery i won't spoil that here but um so that that's the same case here where the last Okay, I'm not, well, phrase strike, that, that's kind of a spoiler. I won't say anything more. But but the way the mystery unravels in this season, in this show, very much so made me so happy. Not in the sense of like, okay, a horrible thing happened still, but like I just finally know like this is how it happened. We have this definitive like chain of events, and now we get to move on. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, but um, anyway, I, I think that's all I can say. Um, well, again, the characters, Perry, E.B., uh, Pete, Drake, damn it, I keep forgetting. There's uh, the running gag in my reviews. Like, there's the um, the central female character in the story who is always like, who's just who, who's always doing something. But I, I always have that one character in every show I review. Like, I just forget their name. Like, I know the name, and then when I'm on camera, I forget the damn name. And once again, I forgot. Oh my god, I think it was. Oh, damn, I know. 
Della, Della, yeah, finally, I was like, I had to connect Della, uh, her two, and then just, um, and also Alice, Sister Alice, and, uh, and, um, God, who was the, who, um, and Emily, and, and, Do and the Dots, Dotsons, um, all of them played their roles, fair, the actors and actresses who portrayed them, portrayed them fairly well, um, I really got enthralled in the story, it kind of kind of delved like okay, are we gonna get some like really like some crazy elements here? And we did it. They had log logistical explanations for all of them, and yeah, through and through, I enjoyed Perry Mason. So if you have HBO Max, um, go watch the show. It's already been renewed for season two, so we're it's gonna come back. But get these eight episodes, these eight chapters, as they call them, are very much so. They're great, and I they're well worth the watch. Full eight hour eight hour episodes. Well, not 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 every episode. I mean, like the whole experience is eight hours, but it's a whole it's like it's a whole day, but it's worth it. Okay, I need sorry if you don't know where I drink a lot of tea on the show. I'm not drink. I don't drink beer. I don't drink um, water on the show. I drink tea. I drink hot piping cups of tea because um, my throat. I over abuse my throat a lot. Um, but, so with that being said, let's get to spoilers. So, this is your last chance. Go watch Perry Mason on HBO Max if you've been convinced by me. But otherwise, go. There are episode reviews waiting for you. If you're watching it, go check them out on the channel. You ready? Three. Two. One. Okay, we're back. Yeah, this, this, this scene, the series has had a lot of like weird sex scenes. Like we had the chubby eating out a woman with food sex scene. We had the uh, Perry just being dominated by her by his female air air uh, air um, her, her, his pilot girlfriend um, or or friends with benefits. I don't I don't really know what their definition is. Um, the weird motel scene. Uh, it, it was all just so weird. It, it really was. Um, yeah, so yeah, so talking about the show itself, now we're we're off the cuffs here. We're off. We're you know we're continuing where we where I picked off last week. Um, looking back through and through with the mystery itself, I feel like they did such a great job crafting this mystery. Where, again, like I said during the the spoiler filled segment, um, the spoiler free segment, I talked about how the show kind of like with using us as like a tool we got to know who did what in, in in the mystery but we weren't exactly sure of how it happened so we had hearsay we had the, the da played by the amazing stephen root portray his series of events then we have perry trying to figure out the real truth and seeing other people's interpretations or versions of the events we just didn't know until when we actually got the actual moment it it was it just played for so well it just it just played out so well and i was Extremely satisfied with the way how everything branched out, how everything, you know, turned into and um, how this world just um, this world is just rich with characters. And, you know, and given how this is a period, because this is a 1930s centric show, um, even seeing that, like playing do using those that time period and its elements into play here, it, it worked in benefit of the show instead of like, oh, we it's in the 1930s. So we have to mention this. We have to mention that they played every single element. Uh, correctly, such as the Great Depression time period and corruption in the police department and segregation and racism, all that stuff. They played that so well in the show and it made sense for those elements to be there instead of like, hey, we're in the 1930s, let's just shoehorn this in just because we can't. It's it's the time period. They don't do it, they don't shove it down our throats that much and that's what I respect about this show so much. Um, on to the characters. Um, we gotta start with our titular character. Um... Perry Mason himself. Um, honestly, again, I said this before in the start of the, the, start of the review. Matthew Reese has per performed a great job as, as Perry Mason. And it was actually surprising because Robert Downey Jr. originally was supposed to play Perry Mason, but he had to drop out because of scheduling conflicts, which was weird because the only other project he was filming besides Avengers, if this show didn't really need that much post-production... Was Doctor Do it was Doolittle, and I, I swear to God, if he actually passed up Harry Basin for Doolittle, he made a grave mistake. But anyway, um, obviously he's played like detective solving character before in um, in Sherlock Holmes, which I can't wait for him to come back to in the third one. Hopefully, someday if the pandemic doesn't delay it further. Um, but Matthew Reese plays the character so well, and we clearly see the journey between the old Perry Mason when we saw him in episode one, which was a broken down man who is just living his life one day at a time. He's just doing any job for money. He's trying to get back to his... He's trying to get involved in his son's life, but he needs money. 
but the, the jobs are not just, it's not coming in. He's also dealing with a lot of other stuff between his house potentially being bought out by a very crazy Hispanic pilot who also wants to bang him. So that's a, that's a benefit and also a curse. Um, he just is dealing with a lot and he just turns to like drinking and turns into um, kind of an alcoholic and, you know, um, into a, into someone like that where he's just living day by day. He's just like, he's wandering through life and, you know, thankfully he does have some friends who manage to, to look at him and say, like, yeah, you can do better. You can be better. But we, we haven't reached that point yet. And him being a PI just seems like the most easiest job. Well, at least for him, because like there's no hours, there's no set routine, there's no set schedule. He just does whatever he wants. As long as he solves the, the, the case and gets his information, he gets paid. Uh, and that's how the show starts for him, because like he just gets, assuming he gets assigned to one of the biggest cases of the year, what more can go wrong? And then we just get to see him. Um, and I, like the moment he saw Charlie's, Charlie's face in the, in the morgue, I, I think seeing that face and him being a father, another thing I, I may have over glance, like he, him as him as a father looking at a baby boy who was loved by parents, presumably at the time and being taken away and being killed like this. I, I feel like this kind of like was the wake up call Perry needs. Like, this is the case that mattered. This is the case that I need to put a hundred percent of my time to a hundred percent of my effort to. This isn't just another um, chubby comedian trying to have sex with someone that's not in his um, repertoire or on his contract. It's not, it's not that. This is just a, he's looking for justice for a little boy who had his life taken away, tragically, because of cir circumstances at the time period we didn't even know what, what happened yet. And then when we started seeing through and through like more elements of his character, like seeing him, he's never willing to back down. He's always willing to fight for the, sm for the little people. He's always willing to keep going no matter what. He's always looking for a way out. He's looking for the, he's looking for the way to get through to solve an issue. And once we reach the halfway mark of the season, of the season, seeing him having those moments, but just more stronger than ever, once um, Evie passes away, he, it, it slowly dawns on, on him and also, um, to Della that he's he 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 can he can be a lawyer, he can be a defense attorney, he can become a person for the people. He can't. It's in his body. It's in his bones. But he just doesn't. He doesn't fully get it yet. He doesn't fully understand it yet. And um and seeing that change, like the moment Perry puts his hand on the um and swears in um as a lawyer, that was the moment where it's like this is a different Perry. This is the same Perry we knew, but he's more. Mature, he's more responsible, he's more determined more than ever so to be to solve this case, to protect Emily, and to be able to um, be able to figure out the truth and um, um, prevent her from staying behind bars. And spoilers again, you know, it doesn't 100% work out in his favor. Like, he manages to save Emily, but he doesn't bring justice to Charlie, 100% speaking, that he's aware of. Um, but then getting to see him, like, after this, since after this event, like he knows, like he can become a lawyer. He can be a great defense uh, attorney. Maybe even better than he be. We'll see. We'll see how things play out next season. But um, it very much pro it proves in the eight episodes that Perry is something more. Because in episode five, we 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 got to the funeral um, part of the episode where Perry and Della head out to um, Northern California to per to participate in um, Eb's funeral. He takes the time to go further away to go see his son, to go see his son that he hasn't seen in like years. And getting to realize that, yeah, he does miss his son, but he's still not a hundred percent sure if he's even capable of being a good dad. And then there was a scene between him and his wife, well, his ex-wife that, um, Hey, I don't even tell my, uh, our son about you that much. Cause he's going to start asking going like, what do you do for a living? Um, how do you do this? How do you get money? How do you manage your life? And you know, She's ashamed of him because he is just a, no offense to him, like he's just a deadbeat um, PI. He doesn't get that many cases. He doesn't get paid very well. He can't really support anyone besides himself. Uh, so telling your son that, so he's still young in his life, that like, hey, your your dad's a deadbeat in, in a way. Um, and Perry just kind of realizes that like, yeah, he, he needs to be something more for his son. He wants his son to be... Um, to be filled with honor, they're like, hey, Perry Mason is my father. And 
ironically, that was the episode where he kind of figures out that he could be a defense attorney, that he could defend Emily, that he could, you know, do all this. And with that being said, however, um, it, that, that kind of shines through into his, um, into his character direction because, like, he, he, he figures out, like, he needs to be better than what he is now and the opportunity was there and he took it and thankfully, you know, hopefully, if we come back for season two, we get to see more of that direction. Um, but overall, the season one journey for Perry Mason himself was um, was really strong. We, we definitely got to see the major change um, within him and um, have him slowly become the steps to the character he will become in the the books and the other projects that he's probably been there. Um, I'm, I'm going to go with um, Della next. No, I'm not going to go with... I'm going to go with E.B. next. E.B., he wasn't in that se- in the series that much. He was only in the first four episodes, five, if you count his dead body. He was your typical, like, again, it was the the, the generic, like, the o- original elements for me that I got dr- saw in the show, where E.B. was just a, he's just a lawyer. He is very honorable. He wants to do the right thing. He wants to protect his client. He cares about Perry. Those are just... Generic good lawyer 101. We we saw that through and through in him. But then when we got to episode three and then episode four, and then we got to see the cracks in his character, the flaws. He's made some mistakes in his career. He's done some bad things. He's done some things to get ahead of his, his career. And then when we saw, we got to see his like weaknesses. He we, his eventual like spiraling downwards. And originally um, by episode four, I thought before we got to the end, I was like, okay, this is going to be a redemption story for um, E.P. He's going to eventually find his way to protect Emily, to defend her in court, to be eventually be able to clear her name. That, I honestly, that's what I thought my original take on the character was going to be. But then, you know, when we ended up episode four with him committing suicide, essentially, because he's just too, he's just a shame that he can't live with his mistakes. He's He can't live with that. He can't be a disgraced lawyer because all he's been in his life is a lawyer. And if he doesn't have that anymore, then who is he? And it made sense because that's all he's done. When you take something that powerful and that, you know, um, uh, important to someone, you, you kind of like re-question like, who are they as a person? And I feel, I feel like that was kind of like his final moments thinking like, who would I be if I was a lawyer? That not only was disbarred, but disgraced from everyone around me like how do you move on from that and I don't think he's actually found a way he didn't find a way to like see his life beyond being a lawyer and then I mean again committing suicide never the way to go never should be an option but he did that as an escape route just so he can avoid the shame just so he can avoid paying for his mistakes and honestly it just made his like his tragic end more and lifting for the others because like okay we have to be what EB couldn't be we have to be good we have to be strong we have to like do the right thing we have to make sure um, we're not making any mistake that we're doing this for the right reasons um, and so far thankfully well about ninety five percent they've been doing that since EB's death they've been trying their damn they they tried their damn best to protect Emily and you know be logistical in their strategy to be able to not try and like do anything shady or stupid. Um, I said 95% for a reason, because you're aware of the ending. But, um... Um, yeah, that was Evie for you. Um, Della. Della was, again, in the typical vein of, like, you know, 1930s. Um, me being very narrow-minded with the first three episodes. I honestly thought Della was just going to be that character, like, she's comedic relief. She's gonna eventually have her own storyline, eventually. But she was just gonna be there and just, you know kind of just help BB out, just kind of be his, like, his support system um, as his assistant, and that would be, would have been it. And no, they, they had more to, to, to her, and eventually, yeah, when we got to episode four, um, we saw that, like, she takes up a lot of crap from EB, like, she's not happy, she's not satisfied where she is in her, in her life, because all EB does is, I like, treat her like just an assistant, where she wants to be more than, she wants to be treated as a partner, but EB doesn't, doesn't sadly realize that till it's too late. And and then when, you know, after EB's passing, e- Della kind of has that switch where, okay, she's ready to step up, she's ready to be more asserted, more in charge, more, you know, dominant. And, you know, especially even more helpful um, with Perry taking over the case 
end the matter and doing whatever she could, she can to help him and to you know, to um to help uh, um, help out Emily. And seeing that again when we get to the last scene of the season for, with her, and then seeing her be more yeah be more dominant, be more assertive, tell Perry this is what I want, this is what I'm gonna get, deal with it. And it's like yes. And I don't want to say a you go you go girl, you go woman type of thing, but like it, that was kind of like that moment, like yeah you you. you I don't know. I sound like Joe from Family Guy from that Lois um, theme song gag. I, I, I'm sorry if I feel like that. Um, Pete. Pete is just funny. He's just a funny dude. I mean, I don't know why. Pete's just a, just a likable and respectable dude, but he just does some really crazy stuff and really some stuff I wouldn't really stand for. But for some reason, it just it could just be the time period. Like This is just a character that could have... A man in this time period where... He's married, he has kids, but he's also having some side people on the side, you know, just trying to get, kind of keep his life stable and, you know, kind of spiced up, so to speak. And and him being another PI alongside Perry, um, even he gets, like, he's the, I think he's the one person that really just deals with the most out of Perry's bullshit in, initially, where he sees Perry in both either a complimental or just an insultful way that he cannot be a PI. There, there's something more he can do. And even he knows that, and, you know, he doesn't know what it is yet for Perry, you know, where he should go, but he knows there's something more than him. And, you know, even when Perry becomes, uh, switches to, to the lawyer role of the of the whole case, Pete's still there, through and through. He's just going along with the punch, he's go, like, he's doing the pro bono work just to, like, help out again the, for justice for the little, for little Charlie. And... Yeah, there's not much to say. Like Pete is, Pete is just a funny dude. Like I, 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 I didn't. I understood why he at the kind of like theoretically, theoretically left Perry at the end of season one, where he was. I think he was just not ready to like fully explore that side of life yet. Um, be with Perry, like just doing whatever whatever they want, except with a different title. Him just rejoining the DA investigation force and just him. Doing st that seems more plausible for him than just, you know, helping Perry maybe once in a while doing some some shady stuff that's off the record type thing. Um, again, that's my opinion though. Uh, maybe we'll ch we'll get things different in season two. Um, Drake. Drake honestly was the character that was that joined in late in the game. He wasn't in episode one because they, I, I guess they didn't want to squeeze in every single character possible, but. Drake is a upstanding citizen. I think he's a model worker. <sighs> Sorry. Sorry about that. I've been up for all day. Um, he's not just a pencil pusher. He's a, he's just a man who's just doing the right thing. I mean, um, especially in the environment that he's in, especially in the 1930s where there hasn't been any civil rights leg 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 legislation passed yet. There isn't, so um, a lot of colored people um, are dealing with a lot back then, and especially even he being in the police force, he's always being pushed around, not really being taken much. Um, seriously, he's just like a grunt or a goon at the end of the day um, in the command of the captains, the detectives. Um, circle. But... Even with that, Drake is honestly the most, the best guy in the show. He is nice. He is responsible. He goes to church. He cares about his wife so much that when things were getting serious and then, you know, he was a potential target for um, the detective who actually did do the murders, um, he knew, like, okay, you need to go. Not because I don't want you, but, like, you need to go and be safe. Like, we have a kid on the way. I don't want my kid to die because, you know, of some other thing involved in, uh, involved in this matter. He just always does the right thing, and he's always, like, ready to, like, be able to not follow into the, what was going on with society back then with certain people, in certain, in certain, um, racial backgrounds. He wasn't like that. He, he kind of represents what everyone should be, that, hey, we're all human, we all should be nice to each other, treat each other with, with, with respect, um... Try not to raise conflict when necessary, and just try to live a path of peace. That's kind of what he was embodying, and even when he kind of like was going against the police's back to go help Perry, he was still thinking about his wife in the end. But he also realizes the sense of justice, the sense of like, 
I need to do I need to do this good thing because it's it's what's right. It, you you got to do the right thing always. And thankfully he did at the end. He was he managed to and um and also the actor. I I've seen him before on Gotham and it was like I love this character on Gotham. He played Lucius Fox. I loved him in that. So getting to see him again in an, another element um was was well worth the um the revisit even though Gotham just ended last year but uh whatever. Um there's two. Yeah, Sister Alice. For the preacher type lady, she can preach a loud, a loud, a loud voice. She, she can. That she's, she was very loud. She was very, like, um, into the whole, into her gospels, into her sermons. And again, I honestly thought going into like she was just going to be like that source of like for wisdom, for guidance. That you know, I, I, I just, I just felt like that. Um, these char- the, the character like that would just only be in the side of good. But then when we like immediately soon enough, we got to see. There's a more vulnerable side to her, a more human side to her, that she has these, you know, weigh-ins way from the past, that he, she is, you know, putting the entire church on her back, and she has to support them um, with her sermons. Otherwise, they go flat out broke. Um, yeah, and then, you know, her, like, supposedly having visions from God and, you know, you know having that... Um, the honor of saying, like, I am a chosen representation of, a representative of God. Like, I know what he wants to do. I know what he wants to say. Um, and if you believe me, you'll, you'll be along for the ride, too. And when we got to the whole, let's resurrect Charlie thing, it was like, I don't think the show's gonna dive into the supernatural. I don't think so. Um, and then when we got to see the shades of it, like, realizing that, like, yeah, this is, I don't know what the hell I was thinking, but now I've just kind of painted myself into this corner. Also, that despite her um, circumstances in, in the church, she's still very much showcased. She's still a nice person. I mean, she helps out... Damn, I forget the name. Um, she helps out... Emily, Emily, um, so much. Um, despite beyond the Charlie Resurrection st- stunt, it, she does... She just sees her as, like, she has no one. She has no one to turn to. That no one really um, believes her. Like rarely anyone believes her anymore. They like, even trusts her. And Alice is like that one. Like at first it felt like Alice was the leader of this group, but then as the as the season progressed, we th- we started to see there's a more bigger group in the background, like kind of being puppeteering the whole endeavor. And. Even eventually, Alice eventually decides, yeah, I had enough of this. I can't do this anymore. This is just just way too much. Like, I can't, like... It's just like that, like, especially when the resurrection just gets botched up. She just knows that, like, I can never do this again. I need to move on to, like, where um, life really needs to take me next. And getting to see that, um, especially when we pick up with her um, months later and as her new life, she's kind of had that acceptance of, like, yeah, she's still going to always be a follower of God, but she isn't going to be a preacher anymore. She's going to be just herself, whatever the new name is. It's not really the most happiest ending for her, but I feel like it's just what she wanted, just a nice, normal life. Because even even in that flashback in Episode 7, I believe, where we just see Alice just being used by her mother to just get advantages in life, um, was, it just wasn't right, and hopefully, wherever we, we may see her next time, if we do get to see her again, um, she'll hopefully be in a, in a better place, but the way they ended off her story right here was like, it's, 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 um, it, it's just what she wanted. Um, and the last main character that I, I feel like is a, is a main character is, um, Emily. Oh man, poor Emily, I mean... It's just the classic mistakes people makes, and people will just assume the worst out of it. Where um, marriage isn't perfect, being a family isn't perfect, um, no one is perfect. And did her cheating on her husband with another man was the right move? Not at all. Um, especially with her having a baby with him. I sp- again, really not at all. I mean, that's the thing I don't understand because, um, another thing you should know about me, at, at least at this current juncture, i never been in a relationship or at least a proper relationship. I haven't been there yet. But even, like, seeing my friends and the people I've associated with over the past now, twenty near 23 years of my life, um, cheating is wrong. It just is wrong. Regardless of however things may be going on in your relationship or your marriage or your partnership, it 
doesn't matter because you still have a commitment to this other person. And if you verbally commit to this person, whether it is asking them out or becoming partners or becoming um, a married couple, you make that promise to them that I'm going to support you. I'm going to be with you. I want to be with you. And as long as both parties are, are, are in agreement of it, you kind of have that the same to it. And then when you go behind their backs and then, you know, pass stuff out to you, that, here's the thing. I know this is like a very extreme circumstance with Emily. Like she cheated, she cheated with a guy who somehow was involved in her baby's kidnapping and eventual murder. I understand that's like a little bit too extreme, but it could happen. You just never know. And um, I do feel sorry for her because like they try to use her as a scapegoat. Like everyone just looks at at the situation and say, her, put her as a scapegoat, we'll be fine, we'll be, we'll get our money, we'll get away scot-free, she'll go to jail, we'll all be saved. That's, but it's like, no, like, it, it's unfair. It just is, like, she may have had a shitty marriage. Her marriage may have not been the best. She's made some bad mistakes, but she doesn't deserve to be blamed um, for that on the death of her child. It, it, it shouldn't. And it, it, it's, again, unfortunate. It really is, and... Uh, I feel so sorry for her because, like, you know, she is the tragedy of the story. Like, she lost her husband, she, um, the uh, breakup. She lost her son because of a kidnapping gone wrong. She lost her life. She lost everything. And even at the, at the end of this season, um, seeing her, I don't think that's where she wanted to be. I mean, with the whole botch resurrection story kind of turned, like, successful in a way. Um... It's just so weird. Um, and I looked at her face at the end, ending scene. It's like, she's not happy. She is clearly not happy with her life. But this is the only life she has now. Because her ex-husband's never going to take her back. She has no son to kind of like give her purpose in the world. Like a biological son. I just feel so sorry for her. And you know, even when the court, uh, when the jury ruled a deadlock, it still, it didn't feel like a victory for her. It just felt like that, Okay, I just solved the problem, but what do I have left? I mean, if she went to jail or she didn't go to jail, it doesn't matter. She doesn't have a family to go home to anymore. Perry and the others are not going to stick around forever because it was just a job. Sure, there was a deeper residency um, given the case of the matter. Maybe I like to be wrong and they're, they're going to try and stay in touch with her had things, you know, not turn out the way it was. But I just don't know. Like, At least for in Emily's shoes, she doesn't have that support system anymore she doesn't and i just feel really bad for her and you know there it's not really like her ending was like a, not a really a good ending in my opinion i feel not, not like in a written way but like in a general character way it wasn't that good because she's now on the road living with a bunch of church people and proclaiming that this son who isn't her son is her son that resurrected from the grave from alice i just I just don't I just don't see that as like a happy ending for her. But maybe we'll see her again. Who knows? I, I, I again this is stuff to sit, talk about next week. Um as for the overall mystery, again, being how it was like we got to know the main pieces, the characters, it was just like the moves and steps they made that like made things very interesting where it was everything leads back to the detective, everything leads back to the church. How does this all connect? Where is this all go about and using the court scenes to kind of like tell that story was was so was so was so smart and especially when we got to see the real chain of events and especially in perry's imaginative um um into not inter uh, questioning of of the detective who was responsible in this matter um even seeing that scene was like Fuck yeah, let's nail this guy. Even though this is just imaginary, like, let, let's get this guy. Let's get this. Let's get them to admit that he's he's done these bad things. He needs to pay for them, or at least not get Emily arrested for them. Um, yeah, but but still, but even with that, with, with that, uh, I feel like the mystery, the the overall story, did such a well job. Uh, had done such a well job telling it, and. Uh, yeah, I really, I, I'm really surprised at how, you know, well tied up it was. Was the ending that, the ending was very much, it's the same thing I said in the season finale, all's well that ends well. Like, you know, everyone kind of got what they want out of this whole matter. Does it really matter in the end? Like, you know, some characters just like got off scot-free and some characters just didn't really truly pay the price. That's up for debate, but I felt for me like every character ended the way they needed to for the season and, um... 
Yeah, I mean, some of my favorite my my favorite episode of the season was um, was chapter. I think it was chapter. I think chapter eight was chapter eight was good, but it wasn't the best. Um, I think it was chapter. Se it's time between four and seven, between those two, four, five, and seven. Th those episodes were like really strong. Um, I think my my least favorite episode would have to be chapter. I want to say number two or three. I think it was three. Yeah, three was probably my my, my least favorite to be honest. It was kind of like continuing that path of like we're just getting very generic. Um, directions and until we got twist, so I feel like that was my week. Not to say it was a bad episode, but just to say it was my my weakest episode. So for me personally, at the end of the, all that, um, I feel like Perry Mason is worth the binge. I feel like it's worth the watch along. It's only in eight, eight episodes, eight hours of pure storytelling. Go check it out. Um, it's on HBO Max, or if you had already. Um, again, it, it, it's it's been worth the watch. I really enjoyed it. I can't wait for season two to come out. Um, hopefully next year, should things not get delayed even further. And, um, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's all I, I can talk about Perry Mason the first season. So, with that being said, this has been What's in the Tube from Action X. If you want to know what we're doing overall What's in the Tube, we did coverage on DC Stargirl on every Friday after brand new episode on Mondays and Tuesdays on both DC Universe and the, and on the CW. Um, and all for free on Wednesday on the CW.com and the CW app. That wrapped up already on, on its episode reviews. Um, we're going to do a season one review of it this coming Friday, as well as the season two predictions the next week. Um, we also did coverage on Doom Patrol season two. We wrapped up the episode reviews on that uh, after its final episode came out on a Thursday on DC Universe and HBO Max, both streaming services. Um, we wrapped up that series. Well, that season. We're doing, we, I think we we're next up is the season two review. And then afterwards, we're going to be doing the season three predictions. Hopefully, barring anything happens to Fando. But if you only care about per if you only care about Perry Mason, then you're still in luck. Um, next week, we'll be back for season two predictions and hopes, where I will just talk about what I would like to see the characters go in season two, what I would like to see in season two, all that sorts. Well, let's go. Um, that'll be next week. That'll kind of that will end off our Perry Mason coverage for 2020, and hopefully, we'll be back next year for more Perry. Mer Perry Mason episodes, but before I let you go, let me know in the comments below what did you think overall of season one of Perry Mason, or are you gonna watch it? Again, this has been Action What's on the Tube from Action X. If you want to see more of What's on the Tube, specifically our Perry Mason coverage, please subscribe to Action X on YouTube.com. Um, ring the bell for notification when the next video is live. Um, like, favorite, share if you want to, but um, it, it is very much generated if you if you do. It does help us out a lot. As well as follow us on social media to be up to date on updates and such. I'll see you, Masoners, next week for the Season 2 predictions. But until then, peace out.